All right, hello everyone. Today I'm going to be doing a video on Minecraft. <laughs> um, so yeah, this video is going to be basically on. Um, oh, this redstone stopped working for some reason. Um, this video is basically going to be on this um, this map that I've been making for the past how many weeks, um, and it's honestly pretty cool because um, I. I've wanted to make this map for quite a while, and uh, of course, I didn't really get around to it. Um, so, now that I have got around to it, I can um, showcase it off to you guys. So basically what this map is, is it is a, um, the map is actually called the Obelisk, and it's basically this structure. Um, I do actually sum summarize it quite well. Um, this is where you spawn. That area that I've just been to before is just a developer tool area where you just teleport to each area pretty quickly. But um, I'll read all the, the stuff here so that you guys, um, you know, can understand what this area is. So, the obelisk, a lost adventurer. So I do plan on making future versions of this map um, if, you know, <laughs> if people want it. Um, but here we go. So the obelisk guide, how to play. What is this map? So this map is a multiplayer exploration storytelling parkour experience. The difficulty of this map is kept quite low to maintain the concept of time advancing, as well as being less laborious. So of course, um, this map isn't going to be your normal parkour kind of three and a half block jump, four block jump, you know, <laughs> kind of difficult parkour map. It's very much going to be pretty simple. Um, in fact, it even has like arrows and stuff pointing you where you need to go to like help with you know the experience and stuff. Um, so it is pretty simple to complete, and that's the goal. Is I want anyone to play the map and enjoy it, um, and not feel as if they have to keep retrying the same area over and over and over and over and over again. Um, and of course I do have quite a lot of checkpoints as well to make sure that it obviously isn't laborious. So, then we got, what must I do when playing? So firstly, you will be greeted with the obelisk. This structure represents the events catalogued of the lost adventurer on the search for answers. Once enough fragments are collected in an area, you can proceed to the next. So that's basically how the whole thing works. We have 16 areas representing all of the different colour blocks in the game. And each area has a different theme. So in the first area it is medieval. In the second it is um, incursion or infiltration. Basically an area that is just basically destroyed. Um... Then the next one is Remembrance and stuff like that. So we we have areas for each and every one and a colour block associated to each and every one and each colour block has a different effect. So, for example, the pink one is Regeneration. So, yeah, that's basically how that works. Now, what are fragments? Shown as green orbs whilst playing, they emit a humming sound when you are nearby. Standing inside a green orb gives you the fragment and increments your progress counter. Following arrow, bro arrow blocks helps you see the path to the orb. So, I mean, it's pretty simple. It just helps you guide your way there. Because some, some of them are a bit difficult to find if the arrows weren't there. And I want to make sure that it is pretty simple. Um, so here we go. How many fragments are there? All areas have 5 fragments, except the white and black areas where there are 15 fragments. This brings the total to, 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 this brings the total to 100 fragments to finish the story. Completing an area gives the tablet of that area. Then we have what is different in each area. Firstly, the scenery will be adapted to the story. Also, the particle will change depending on the terrain. Additionally, ability blocks are introduced which, with each area. These are explained when you encounter new areas. So, it's just pretty simple. So here we go. Can you die and respawn whilst playing? Yes, a death counter keeps track of deaths. Throwing, a com throwing the compass kills you too, but re respawns you at the last spawn, saving time. 
Spawn points are made in each new area and checkpoints are used throughout levels. So yeah, um, there is a death counter that just keeps track of deaths. Um, and there's a compass that you have cons constantly throughout the entire um, time you're playing that just simply kills you. And that is honestly pretty good sometimes because um, if you're in a position where you just fell from a block or whatever and you want to get back to your checkpoint and, you know, you didn't die off the fall or whatever, you can just use, you can just throw the compass on the ground, it'll immediately kill you and you'll respawn back at your checkpoint. Obviously that will add towards your deaths, but it just saves a bit of time without you having to do the entire course over again and actually respawn at your checkpoint. So it just saves a bit of time. Um, <coughs> so is there anything to do after finishing the map? Yes, you are timed whilst playing. When you finish the map, the fastest time is saved to your highest score. This opens the possibility of speedrunning the map to beat friends or the world record. So honestly, I don't, that, that was another big thing as well, is that I didn't want to make it so this map as like a one-time thing. You, you, you complete it once and that's it, done. Because um, that's honestly what you're seeing quite a lot of maps. You kind of just see that map's just, you know, there's not really much other potential other than, you know, kind of beating it <laughs> and then publishing your video on YouTube or whatever. Um, but with this map, it's different. I have embedded a speedrun mechanic whilst playing and it'll pop up on the right hand side when you are playing. As you can see, it says Obelisk Progress, so it tells you how, how much out of 100 you are done. It says the speedrun timer right there. So that just, you know, ticks every single second and total deaths. That just shows how many deaths you have. Um, so yeah, that is just how the, the whole thing works. Um, and the speedrun high score is set to as high as it can possibly be. Um, so that when you do have a new high score, it will integrate that and make it the new high score. So I'll show you a lot of these command blocks afterwards, but I'll just show you the map real quick. So we'll go through here, and it is the Obelisk, A Lost Adventure. Now what you'll see immediately is my speedrun counter is going to start going up. And we'll see that in a couple of seconds. There it is. So it's going to start going up. You see the speedrun counter right there? It's going up. Now I have actually made a map feature. So this this place right here is the Granberg Castle. Um, so there it is right there. And we are located right there on the map. And uh, if we go through here, we will uh, basically, yep, here we go. So the medieval tablet, the Granberg Castle. So there we go. Um, now, oh, I missed this part here. So on the bottom right there, you can see it says, collect the 15 medieval fragments and explore the prologue of the glorious Granberg Castle. And then white wool acts as a checkpoint if stepped on, allowing you to save progress. So this is where basically every single area, you, you know, you're greeted to a new block that will be used throughout that area. Checkpoint blocks are used in every area. This is just where you're greeted to it, but the other blocks are only used in that one area. So I'll show you what happens when I, say, you know, climb up Wallace Mountain and I find one of these orbs. You see how it's emitting a bit of sound and some particles. If I step inside of this, you can see my progress on the right goes up by one. And I get the fragment. So I get the fragment right there, North Overlook. And there's 15 in this area. Same with the, the black um, the black area as well. Um, there's also 15. And I'll show you that one in a bit. So if I go through here, you'll see that there's some parkour to get up here. And you're going to jump from here up to here. And then over here. And you get this one over here. Maven Church. And all this time, my um, death counter, I mean, sorry, my, my speedrun counter is taken away. This one's a bit um, hard to see when you're passing through, but that is that one, Sunflower Fields. This area is primarily an exploration area, just to ease you into the game, because in the next couple areas, well, in every other area, it's just going to be, you know, parkour. So you'll go through there, up here, up here, along here, and to this fragment here. This is when we start seeing the checkpoint block. You can see um, when I stand on this, it says checkpoint reached. And um, my spawn point will be set there. And you'll see, we'll go across here. You'll see we get another one here, rivers that moat. 
Uh, there's also in a castle. This is the main area. And we can go over here, up here, and get a, another one over here. After parkour on, on that wall, another one here, and in the castle as well. There is a secret one by parkour up here. There's one up here. So settlements, fortunes. So. As you can probably tell, I'm trying to kind of convey a bit of a storyline, um, which a lot of the time I don't really like to do with maps. I like to just get into the into the game, but I've honestly really wanted to do a map that has some form of storyline that isn't like you know, they like kind of forced in a way, like isn't kind of like forced to the person playing the game that like you have to know about the storyline type of thing. I don't really want it to be like that. I just have. I'll just probably have it. I haven't actually implemented much of the storyline like parts, but what I'm thinking is probably in these like little buildings here, there might be a chest or something, and it'll contain like a book or whatever. And you can probably read like a little script that someone might have made, um, and it'll add a bit of like story elements into the map, which I think will be pretty cool. Um, but as you can see, you know, this this map, this um, area probably takes you around about 20 minutes to complete. Obviously, I'm just flying between areas. Um, and of course, a lot of these um, orbs are, you know, might, might be a little bit difficult to find. Um, we've got that urban village. And then we've got this one up here, um, Mountain Olympias. Um, this one was pretty fun to make. That one's that one. And uh, yeah, so the, honestly, this map so far has been pretty fun to make. I've only been spent, I've only spent about a week making the map so far, um, and I've made three areas, and, and I've nearly completed the fourth. Um, so, not really, oh shit, not really, um, not really surprised that I'm going to be making you know another version of the map in the future. Because uh, this one's actually been pretty fun to make. Um, and I'm hardly implemented any of the storyline features. So there you go. That's my 15 fragments right there that I've just collected. And I'm just taking a drink. And now we're on to the next area, which is the incursion site. So you can see right here the Blitz incursion site right there. So we've unlocked a new area, as you can see right there. And it says to continue the adventure, stand on the red pillar. And of course, you can see this actual area, which is the obelisk. Um, you can see over time it will actually be changing um, the scenery. And you can see all the, the blocks in the center. These are the ones they have to complete. The first one we have already completed. And you can see it's, it's destroyed. Um, and over time, after completing all these, we're going to be rebuilding this tower. This tower is going to be rebuilt as a black tower. And that will be the final area. So... Now we'll go through here, and it's the infiltration tablet. This is the area that I haven't completed yet, but you can really see how um, how kind of just cool all these different areas are. That is my world edit thing over there. Um, I use a world edit tool on this map. I'll try and give credit if I remember who actually made it. Um, but it is a really good tool for making maps, like this world edit mod. Um, really, really good. This honestly only took around about an hour or so to make this area. Like, all the terrain and everything. Which, usually, on Bedrock versions, would take fucking forever. Um, to, like, make all this terrain. So, really cool, the World Edit mod, but that's just, you know, that's just uh, how it is. So, collect the five in infiltration uh, fragments and gaze upon the wreckage caused in the Blitz incursion site north. That is likely the longest um, text thing at the bottom of the screen. And that's going to become a bit of a problem. I have actually put in the book that you need to set your GUI scale to minus one in order to actually see a lot of these things. Hopefully that is set to that scale on all devices. If it becomes a problem, I'll try and change it. As with a lot of things on this map, I'll have to change a lot of it. But that's just something that will happen probably. So red will were in to kill you if you stepped on, resetting you to a previous checkpoint. So yeah, this is this area obviously in, introduces the insta kill block, which is uh, pretty interesting. So that's that. I will now show you guys um, 
I'll TP back to spawn. Well, not spawn, but I'll TP back to my little uh, TP area. Um, but that was that area. We can see quite a lot of these uh, command blocks that will soon be here. There's quite a lot of them, um, but honestly, it's just mainly copy and pasting. Um, I'll probably make another video actually going over the command blocks, actually, because this video is getting quite long. Um, I'll probably just showcase the map, and if you guys are interested in the command blocks, I'll show you how some of it works. Um, so you guys can possibly make a map of your own. Um, but we have the red area, then the pink, green, orange, cyan, green, um, blue, brown. Then we have magenta, which I've actually completed. So this is the city area. This is the most recently completed area. So collect the five megalopolis fragments and acquire help to free the workers in Yogal cityscapes. Magenta wool will give you resistance if stepped on, enabling you to jump buildings with minimal fall damage. Is that how you spell minimal? Looks wrong. I don't know. I'll change it if it's wrong. <laughs> um, but you can see this is the area. A very, very large city. And if you want to know how long this probably took me, it took me around about mm, six hours to probably do all this. Um, and it is a very cool area. I absolutely loved making this. Um, I'm actually a little bit sad that it's done now, but I'll show you where all the fragments are if you guys want us to. I love this area, making it and everything. Um, it was really, it was really fun. Um, this shouldn't be like this. <laughs> Have I done that? <laughs> I'm a bit stupid right now. Uh, hold on. I'll just patch this in. Uh, here we go. Just a little bit stupid. That's all. Right. Okay. There we go. That's that done. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I thought when I was doing that. Anyway. So I'll show you all the different areas. Um, of course, this really does reiterate the kind of um, arrow blocks and the um, the feeling of kind of jumping between places, exploring the scenery without really having it like the parkour aspect like shoved down your neck. So yeah, when you see these like little arrow things, this is where the start of a course probably is, and you just follow the arrows as you can see right here. Um, and it'll lead you towards the end. So another arrow over here. Oh, there's a checkpoint block. We will go get our checkpoint. And we'll jump over here to this little lamp over here. Jump over here. We'll see if I have some... Uh... Oh, shit. My fly mode in. in... <laughs> fly mode went up. Uh, we'll have some things to climb up there. Oh, I fell. Don't worry. I could have used my compass right here. And I would get teleported back to right over here. And I'd have to do this area over again. But obviously, to save time, I'm just going to, you know... Oh my god, I feel that, feel that twice now. Um, might need a bit of a run and jump. Yeah, it's very much possible. <laughs> I don't know how I feel, I feel that twice. Um, but then we'll go down here. And over here. So you can really see how it's um, pretty easy to like tell where you need to go. Um, over here. And then over here. Checkpoint. Okay. Oh, I fell. Oh, fell again. I haven't actually test tested a lot of these areas, so they could actually be like <laughs> not possible. But um <laughs> hopefully they are. <laughs> It'd be pretty funny if they aren't. I was gonna change them, but oh well. But yeah, um honestly, you know you can probably see right here, pretty simple parkour. And just to get that one fragment, having to do all that course, you can probably tell how this changes from the first area. The first area is mainly just exploration. You know, give it, get a little bit of a taste of how the map feels. This is just throwing you right... This is like halfway through the map now. This is like area 10, I think it is. Um, and I made this one here because this was probably going to be the biggest area to make and I wanted to make it pretty early on so it wasn't going to be like, you know, hard to make later on. Um, but, you know, like... Yeah, it, it, you, it have to do quite a lot to get, just get one fragment. Um, but yeah, all these, it's, it's lagging quite a lot right now. I'm pretty sure that's my internet, but you know. Um, but you can see how like a lot of these areas are pretty huge, but most of it isn't incorporated into the parkour. And here we go, here's another area right here, so arrows. And the, the fragment's actually just in there, right there. Um, but we can't actually reach it, so we have to go around and get it. Let me go up here. The left, jump along, 
checkpoint. This is one of my favorite um, areas because it's like, it's just, I like the kind of feeling of just going across like buildings and stuff and jumping from one to one, like 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 Mirror's Edge. I love that game. It was so fun. I, <laughs> this is a very difficult jump. So that's why I put a, um, a checkpoint there. Well, it's not like really difficult, but like it's difficult enough that most people might be a little bit pissed off and having to do. So once again, just reiterating the, like, the kind of feeling of just completing areas with speed and not really spending a lot of time on one area. But as you can see, we go left. I actually missed that checkpoint, but you can see right there, I just got resistance. That right there is the obviously the block of the area. So if you were to jump from this area down there, you would likely actually die from fall damage. But with resistance, you will not. So that is the block. Just another block that it's probably one of the most underwhelming blocks, but because of the area, I thought it'd be nice to um, put an underwhelming block with a pretty overwhelming area so that, you know, I could actually include it. As you can see right there, we are at the fragment right here. And uh, there it is, Crown Skyscrapers. Now, quite a lot of the time, we actually have ways of getting down pretty easily from the, um, the actual fragment, so I can just drop down there. Um, and same with this one, I can just jump down there. Um, but yeah, there's one in the middle area as well, which I didn't actually show. This one my friend made, and um, my friend helped us out quite a lot with uh, this map. Um, and you can see it's in this like kind of like little area. There's a lot of arrows kind of leading you in here. But um, here we go. Then we jump up here. And there we go, Conifer Gardens. So that's that one right there. Um, Pretty simple, it's just, I like to kind of include some hidden ones rather than like all being parkour. Um, so there are some like little hidden ones instead. But for this area, you really need to like explore the entire place to like find where the arrows are. And uh, when you do find the arrows, as you see right here, um, you obviously know that you have an area to be at. Um, so we've got this one here. And just going up the side now. Sorry if you hear like um construction in the background. Um my neighbours are getting some, you know, got all worked into the house. So Yeah, so this one obviously this area does include quite a lot of scaffolding. As it said in the book, um areas like the actual blocks that you use to like you know parkour with in the areas change with each area like it's in the book um so obviously you know things like in the swamp area there'll be a lot of lily pads and drip leaf and all that so in each area the parkour will change and you'll have to adapt to that so and there we are we're on top of this building here and we have resistance again so we're gonna jump over here you would normally die from that height if you didn't have resistance but we of course do. Now, obviously the way I've programmed this is when you hit 20 on the progress counter, which is when I'll complete this area, I'll have 20 because the 15 before and the five now, it'll teleport you to the third area. Obviously this isn't the third area, this is the 10th area. So it'll teleport to the third area. It's just because I've made this one further wrong, you know. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, it'll just make sense obviously in time when all the other areas are made. So, here we go. And we just got a checkpoint, so this area is literally the, um, this ladder place is literally the last part. Um, checkpoint here. And to jump, and I love this one. I love doing that. You'll be able to literally on one heart, I'm pretty sure, with resistance, because like that, that's how much of a jump it was. Right there, Megalopolis. Yokel's inhabitants and to get down you just jump in the water down here and there you go <laughs> that's four out of five now the last one is in the this area here you really have to kind of search for this one because all the buildings are very close together here but it is pretty obvious when you do come across it you see all these arrows right here so it's one of my favorite ones um this one it was actually the last area that i made and uh, it really did bring everything together when I made this one. But here we go, checkpoint reached. Oh, come on, there we go. 
And then we'll go left. Jump across. Over here. So you can really see how this map kind of has be, always been kind of a, a little thing that I wanted to do. Um, because it is just pretty sick to like look around the map and like like even from this like distance here you can see everything around here and you like gaze upon everything you know like even like little things like that right there like you know that's a bit of parkour but it's not really obvious you know what I mean like it's the parkour is just added to the area we build the area and the parkour is just added to the things that we have and um yeah it's honestly, it was really fun making the map. And when it's fun making maps, you know you have a good concoction because it, you know, when you're having fun making a map that's going to be played by others, you know, then then you're over there basically, well, yeah, yeah, you're having fun making it and then probably having fun playing it as well. So it's, like, it's all around pretty good. And then you're also going to be having fun seeing other people have fun playing your map. So it's all around pretty good. And you can also probably hear the little um little humming sound of that fragment there. You know you're pretty much a good idea where that is now. So we're just getting up to it right now. This is the last area here. And then left. You can really see how the arrows do help. And there we go. So it will teleport us to the, the pink area, but don't worry, um, just the way I programmed it. So it's a little infiltration complete, but it's just because it's the way I programmed it. We didn't complete the red area, we completed the pit, the magenta area. Um, but yeah, if I just quickly... Uh, how this basically works, I'll give a very brief um, thing into it on how the fragments works. Um, uh, hold on, just you know, get the list up. So you can see right here, I have 13 tags. Um, I have all of the Megalopolis um, ones. And I actually got the complete infiltration one because obviously my progress one wasn't up to the right number um, because I didn't complete all these areas here. Um, and I just skipped to that one, but that's just got to do with time. Don't worry about it. But you can see we actually have a lot of um, Megalopolis underscore whatever um, tags. We have complete medieval. The other ones there, like we self uh, admin, we host, world edit enabled, we scoreboard setup. Them ones I just got to do with my mod that I've got. So don't worry about them ones. Uh, the speed run one is basically the one that enables you to get um, the number. Keep on going on the speed run because um, that number basically. Um, well, the speedrun tag basically enables you to basically right, have your speedrun enabled. I don't know about a way to put that. <laughs> basically, when you have the speedrun tag, um, the, the command will look at you and go, you are currently playing the game, we will keep this, the timer going. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And that will be removed when you, when you finished uh, the map. So that's just how it works. So most of the time you'll have that, but obviously me, myself, making the map, I will not have that on. Um, and we'll have all the Megalopolis areas. That's just because I have got all the fragments in that area. Um, when I complete an area, like the medieval one, you can see I get the complete underscore medieval and all of the other tags for that area are removed so that it's not really cluttering up Um the tag space right there because there'll be like hundreds of tags and it'll be very hard to see which ones I actually have so that's just a bit of a you know a programming type of um bit of help there so right now if I want to remove all my tags I can go right here and I can remove them all as you see right there if I look right now I've got eight the only ones that I'm missing um are the complete medieval complete infiltration ones which I can remove by going over here um and this will reset everything. It'll even reset my progress as well. Um, you can see we just have the normal five. Um, so I can reset everything right there. And that means I can go ahead and get all the fragments again if I really want to. Also, this little area over here resets my speed run. 
um, tag as well, I believe it's this one. Yeah, it removes my speedrun tag, which of course makes it so the game doesn't think I'm actually playing the game right now. So the game basically thinks I have finished the game instead of actually, um, instead of currently playing it. Um, so it doesn't have any need to timers anymore. Um, so a lot of the commands are literally just here. This is like all the commands for the area. Um, there's quite a lot of things like, you know, armor stand, invisibility, um, death counter. That's how the death counter works. Um, all of the different scoreboards to like re-add them and stuff because there's a little thing with um, like player pro, like with the, with the player not found or whatever that pops up on the right hand side. Um, when someone leaves the world, which I like to reset everything. Um, I'll have a probably a fix for that in the future. But then we'll have replace compass and kill compass, uh, speed run timer and reset timer. I'll show you the little compass thing and how that works. Um, I actually need to remove a tag to make it work because um, I'll tell you the reason why. I have an admin tag, um, which basically... Uh, is only given to people who are building the map to remove the kind of um, this thing right here, the compass. I get given a compass every thing, I think it's five seconds, I think it is, or three seconds or something like that. And when you drop it on the ground, you get a new one. Um, it destroys the compass as well. So you see, when I throw it, it I can't see the compass. It gets destroyed immediately. Um, and I keep getting it. And of course, that's why I've included an admin tag, so I don't keep on getting this compass over and over again when building the map. Now what this compass actually does is, as I said in the book, it kills you. So when I drop this on the ground, if I was in survival, I would get killed and I would get respawned at the checkpoint and I would get another compass. Of course, that would integrate the uh, death counter. So that was just a little um, overview of all that. There's one other area that I have made as well over here. This uh, black area. Um, this I made with my friends. Um, we all kind of took an area to ourselves and uh, made it and then repeated all that um we can see we have all these little areas pretty cool this area it just kind of like re recounts all of the different other areas you've been in um so you know we have the well the, the black one is this area but we have the red the pink the green the orange the cyan the blue and uh, the the other green the <laughs> sorry that's purple and our blue here um brown magenta uh, the two greys, light blue and yellow. Um, of course, magenta is the skyscraper area, so of course we're going to have resistance here, as you see right here. This is the only area, um, the black, this last area, that has every single type of uh, block that does different things. And as you see right here, this is the teleport block. This is what the armor stand thing that we've seen earlier about. It teleports you to wherever an armor stand is which is literally right here but because i've made it invisible you can't see it so an armor stand is right here um so a lot of like little um uh things that i've done with commands and i've learned quite a lot along the way um like you know making it so you get the fragments in that position without having any command blocks around it um so I could 100% need a, com a command block tutorial and a lot of this stuff if you guys want it. Um, but that's only if you guys want it. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching this video. I know it was a pretty long one, but I just want to show you guys what I've been working on. So I'm just going to add that admin tag back on to us. I'm going to check that I've got all of the tags. Uh, yeah, there we go. So, uh, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. On a Well, I'll show you as well that... Um, this area, it's not really that impressive, but like, this is where all the maps are. Like, that's how I'm in all the maps. I basically copy and pasted all this stuff. And, um, yeah, so that's basically that. There's quite a lot um, that I've done here. And summarizing it into a short video is pretty difficult. But, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next video. Bye, everyone.